In our process of researching and writing Mistakes and Miracles, we were inspired by the fact that both of us have been engaged in the work of doing a multicultural, anti-racist beloved community and anti-oppression work for well over a decade. When we started out on this project, we had read a number of books on congregations that were intent on creating uh, multiracial communities. These books mostly focused on Christian congregations. And so we wanted to explore the idea of what would it be like to focus on Unitarian Universalist congregations, to explore the question of in a non-creedal faith such as ours, what is it that calls us to build multicultural, anti-racist, beloved community? That's right. We really wanted to explore what is the call of our faith that makes it mandatory that we do the work of building multicultural, anti-racist, beloved community among us all in order to call ourselves Unitarian Universalist. So in a sense, there's this something more, there's this larger goal that we're shooting for that demands multiculturalism and anti-racism in our way of being together. So that was the whole genesis for Mistakes and Miracles from the very beginning. We decided to take a story-based approach. We wanted to go in depth into the stories of five different congregations. And those congregations are all different demographically, different in geographical location, different in their size, different in their story and the way that they have approached this work and where they are on the journey. And we wanted to take the time, kind of live on the long breath of telling nuanced stories. We feel like that's a way to really show the human quality of this work. It's not an either or total heroes and villains kind of story. It's very mixed and messy and complex. And we thought if we went into depth with these stories and, and allowed the reader to kind of travel with us to these various congregations, that that would make everything come alive for all of us. Thanks to the UU funding panel, we had a grant to visit all of these congregations, some of them multiple times, and we were just greeted so warmly. Mm. Everyone was so generous with their time and with their stories really opening up to us. So we probably talked to um, a good 20 or 25 people um, in every congregation we visited. We talked to people who were passionate champions on this journey, some who were maybe a little skeptical and uh, some who even had conversion experiences as a result of doing this work, and that was really powerful to, uh, to be able to hear about. That's right, we talked to ministers, we talked to lay leaders, we talked to consultants, we talked to trainers. We got the full range of experiences from folks, and then we were just so powerfully moved by how people trusted us with their stories. So we wanted to be sure that we were building a community of conversation partners with whom we would have these accountable relationships going forward, not just during the time of our interviews. As we produced the draft of each chapter, we would send off that whole section to whomever we talked with or mentioned, and they had a chance to see the context of what they we were quoting and what they had said. And often that led to even deeper conversations that we continued by phone or by Zoom. Really these relationships we feel like are gonna last a lifetime for all of us. For two of the five congregations that we studied were our own two congregations, First Parish in Cambridge for me and the First Unitarian of San, the Church of San Jose where Nancy is senior minister. We really wanted to, to go quite deep and make ourselves very vulnerable to show the reader what it is like to be us doing this work. What is it like for a white minister to try to create multicultural, anti-racist, beloved community in this very diverse city, and what it is like for me as a layperson of color to be on this journey. We just wanted to go and show some of our, our deepest thoughts and emotions as we, as we go about doing this sometimes very difficult work. Part of what happens in those chapters as well as over the course of writing the book is our own experience of these issues changes. Our own identities change a bit, mine certainly does, and our relationship deepens and changes as we move through the work together. We were already a contrasting pair. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am, I'm a minister, Karen's a lay leader. I'm an artist by nature and an actor. Karen's a scientist and an engineer. There's an age difference between us. And obviously there's a racial and ethnic difference between us too, and all of those differences and meeting across those differences and exploring how we felt in each of the congregations that we visited, all of those things were incredibly important to the process 
of writing the book, our own relationship had became its own model for building multicultural anti-racist beloved community between us, really. So we talk about that in our concluding chapter too. We hope that you get the sense of, of what it's like to be us in this process. And in fact, we had some pretty common experiences for a white person. I have found myself, even after decades of doing anti-racism work, I found myself having all the usual feelings of wanting to be the good white person, of wanting to get it right. And I think you had some pretty common yeah. experiences too. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of Unitarian Universalists of color, I wasn't always comfortable right the first time I walked into a congregation the way Nancy was. I experienced a few microaggressions mm -hmm. during our visits there. In the course of talking with people, I, I heard, well, both of us heard some pretty heartbreaking stories at times. Listening to those brought up a lot of feelings in me about some of my own experiences. There were times when I myself, listening to these stories, thought, can I stay in Unitarian Universalism? And that's a, a question that a lot of Unitarian Universalists of color have to wrestle with a lot of the time. And that was just heartbreaking for both of us, really. There were tears, there were shared tears. For me, with Unitarian Universalism being really the focus of my whole life, my professional life, as well as my personal life, it was really, really heartbreaking and, and challenging and, and kind of threatening to my faith and my identity to be so close to Karen as we experience these off-putting aspects of our faith sometimes. So that's some of the mistakes that we experienced. And then there were also the miracles. Yeah, I, I think the miracles really are in the relationship. Nancy and I had to really develop a deep trust uh, with each other to share how we were how are we were experiencing these and how are we experiencing them differently and to learn from each other and to uh, to, to share how, how we were feeling. And so I think that over the course of five and a half years writing this book, our own uh, friendship and our own relationship just deepened to a really remarkable degree. And we saw those mistakes and miracles in the congregations, of course, too. That's why we ended up with that particular title. The work is messy and complex, and there's just no way we can enter into it without making mistakes, without having conflict without running into doubt and questions about whether we can even continue on the journey. So we witnessed all of that, and then we saw people with patience and perseverance and a, a commitment that just surpassed everything, finding their way towards reconciliation and healing and real joy and love and aliveness that was just palpable when we walked in the door of these different congregations. And we call those things miracles, really. Yeah. They really were miracles, sparkling moments. And we heard a lot of those stories too. And that really is what gives us hope as we continue on this journey, as we all continue on this journey together.